Uh, once again, a very good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to today's Career Mantra webinar on the topic, Fast Track Your Career Growth with Google Cloud Generative AI course. I am Akash Kumar, Manager for Industry Partnerships team at SSC NASCOM, and I'll be your moderator for today's session. A quick round of introductions. We have Sri Sweta from Google Cloud team, who is program managing the entire engagement with us. We also have subject matter expert for today's session, Mr. Tushar Gupta, who is a senior cloud architect at Google. We'll have more detailed in, in, uh, in introductions as we go along in the session. Uh, so for the participants, you will notice a Q&A tab at the bottom of your screen, which is available for you. You can feel free to post your questions as we go along in the webinar. We'll try to answer as many questions as possible. And if the time permits, we'll have a brief Q&A session at the end as well where you can ask your questions directly from the expert. Now, before we dive into the exciting world of generative AI, I would like to introduce you to Future Skills Prime platform, the platform hosting this incredible learning opportunity that we are discussing today, the Google Cloud Generative AI course. Future Skills Prime is a pioneering digital skilling initiative by the Ministry of Electronics and Information Technology and IT, IT, ES, SSC, NASCOM. With the advent of rapidly evolving technologies, nothing in the tech sector stays relevant for more than six months. Hence, coping up with the digital talent has become mission critical for India. The Future Skills Prime platform has become a one stop place for digital transformation and upskilling the learners of India. And that's why we are here today. The platform is designed to bridge the digital skills gap in India provide world-class learning content, including project-based learning, hackathons, etc. offer government-recognized certifications, connect learners with potential employers for internships and job opportunities via Talent Connect portal. We also have uh, certain paid programs, of course, for which you get Government of India incentives as well once you are certified. So through Future Skills Prime platform, you have access to cutting edge courses like the one we are discussing today, which can significantly boost your career prospects in the tech industry. On Future Skills Prime, we cover a wide range of content which will enhance your career prospects and help you gain edge by learning professional skills along with the technical skills. You'll find courses on Google, on, on cloud computing, AI, cybersecurity, big data, and the list continues to go on. On this portal, right? And most of them being free, just like the one that we are discussing today is completely free of charge. While there are a few paid courses as well, of which after completion, you can have incentives. So on this platform, so far we have 19.23 lakh plus registered learners. We have 8.05 lakh plus course enrollments and 1.2 crore plus digital fluency badges already issued for successful completions. And the dynamics is such that we have engaged over 41.47% women learners through this platform. On your screen, you can see our partners in the reskilling ecosystem revolution, which are from the likes of Google, Microsoft, AWS, Cisco, Accenture, Adobe, Red Hat, etc. So we offer content from these IT giants and help India shape towards a digital scaling revolution. We also have a dedicated portal for offering internships and job opportunities to the certified candidates. So once you have completed your courses and have got the certification, you can leverage NASCOM's Talent Connect portal for the purpose of jobs and internship opportunities and can also participate in various job fairs that we conduct from time to time across India. On the NASCOM Talent Connect, we have 100 plus employers, 150,000 plus jobs, 400,000 plus skilled candidates. You can also benefit from this portal by being able to apply for jobs once you're certified. So as reviews and feedbacks are quintessential for any platform to survive, you can see on our screen, the reviews we have had from the industry folks, as well as the learner community, which includes both the students as well as the working professionals. Now let's talk about the Google Cloud Generative AI course. This course is a game changer for anyone looking to stay ahead in the rapidly evolving field of artificial intelligence. 
Some of the key, key highlights of this course are that it's a comprehensive coverage of generative AI concepts and applications. Hands-on experience with Google Cloud's AI tools and platforms is available. Real-world projects to build your portfolio and skill and completion badges from Google Cloud upon completion is available. By taking this course, you will position yourself at the forefront of AI technology, opening doors to exciting career opportunities in various sectors. To delve deeper into the course content and its career implications, we have an exceptional expert with us today. I am thrilled to introduce Mr. Tushar Gupta, a senior cloud architect at Google. Tushar is a seasoned cloud architect with more than 14 years of experience in multi-vendor technologies and has helped enterprise customers in their digital transformation journey across areas including security, generative AI, workload modernization, and sovereignty. So Mr. Tushar will provide us with in-depth insights into the Google Cloud Generative AI course today, its curriculum, and how it can accelerate your career growth in the AI and cloud computing domains. So without further ado, let's welcome Tushar to share their valuable knowledge and experience with us. Tushar, the floor is yours. I'll just stop sharing and you can begin. Sure. Thanks, Akash. Good afternoon, everyone. I hope uh, we are still awake after having lunch, right? So you can blame Akash for that. I'm mean, going to set up uh, this session post-lunch. Okay. My name is Tushar Gupta, folks, uh, and uh, I'm very, very happy and excited to actually uh, uh, come here for uh, making you understand that what exactly is generative AI. So we're going to uh, run through uh, the basics of generative AI in this today's session. Uh, we're going to cover that, uh, what it means for you, that uh, why you should actually think uh, to build your career in generative AI or AI for that matter. And what are the offerings which Google Cloud uh, offers to you, right? Where you can actually get started on the path of generative AI. So let me share my screen and Akash just confirm once it is visible. Yes, it is. Yeah. Okay. And I hope I'm audible properly. Yes, you are. Perfect. All right. Let's get started. Okay. So I don't need uh, further introduction. Uh, Akash has given us one introduction as well, right? So let's quickly jump on to the topic, uh, which is basically generative AI. You must have heard uh, this term multiple times uh, in last few months, right? Everyone is actually talking about generative AI. When, uh, uh, with all uh, due respect, when Chat GPT was launched, right? Uh, everyone got excited that uh, a new thing has come, right? Uh, it will actually uh, break through uh, all the technologies which has been uh, doing in the past, right? And uh, now we have to, uh, I mean, we'll see new trends, new uh, technologies to play with, right? And that's where um, the new use cases also comes into picture, right? Which we are going to discuss all those use cases, all those case studies, uh, which we are working on day-to-day -day basis with Google Cloud customers. And you can also leverage uh, that knowledge to build your use cases, either for you or for your customers. So let's understand what is exactly is generative AI. But before jumping on to directly onto generative AI, we need to actually go back in time and understand the basic, right? Before understands the word generative, right? Um, the AI, right, which is the core of generative AI, right? Uh, we should not actually forget that. And uh, it has been there from, I mean, I would say more than 50 to 60 years, right? So artificial intelligence is the core, right? Where uh, we all understand that it's a technique which enables computers mimic human behavior. We have seen uh, various websites uh, launching their chatbots, right? We have uh, seen uh, robotics uh, onto that, right? And subset of uh, AI, uh, which is known as machine learning, where uh, we have the AI techniques, which gives the computer's ability to learn without being explicitly programmed to do so, has been there for a long while, right? Uh, <clears throat> so we don't need to expl explain that what is AI and ML, right? But what is very important is that from uh, 2010 onwards, right, uh, there was a concept which actually emerged very, very uh, drastically, and a lot of actually uh, organizations are actually leveraging. It's also a concept of deep learning. It's a subset of uh, machine learning, which makes the computation 
very very effective for us by leveraging artificial neural networks okay so basically this is how it uh, goes into the back end right we don't need to actually go into deeper there are separate uh, courses which you can deep go deeper into uh, ai ml and even deep learning but on a very nutshell on a very high level uh, this is how it looks it captures the data and gets uh, transferred sorry it captures the data and uh, transform that data into multiple chunks and then uses artificial neural networks to process that data to understand the relationships within the data and then provides the relevant output so this has been there uh, from the machine learning as well however the deep learning which is a subset of uh, machine learning uses very 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 complex patterns to understand that how the different uh, data types are related to each other and can provide output now the reason of i'm um, actually discussing of ai ml and deep learning is that because the generative ai is actually a subset of deep learning only okay so generative ai is not a new technology uh, very very important to understand people um, actually uh, don't uh, take it actually uh, in that way because they say that it's a completely new technology and uh, i have to unlearn a lot of things to become an expert or become aware of generative ai rather if you are expert of ai ml and understand deep learning right it is very very easy to actually transform yourself and your career into generative ai because generative ai is a subset of deep learning only now with the generative ai uh, uh technologies coming up right uh, where uh, you must have uh, uh, heard about words large language models everyone is actually building up their large language model google open ai meta right you must have heard of of anthropic llama google gemma gemini all these models you keep on hearing if you are actually following generative ai right but there is a misconception that uh, which uh, we have heard from uh, outside world that it will replace uh, the traditional ai which we call it as a predictive ai so let's understand the very very uh, uh, key differences between what we used to do before the advent of generative ai and whether it is still relevant in the era of generative ai or not so this is how a predictive ml model works right if you are from uh, ai ml background uh you must have taken that data right labeled that data and your predictive ml model which you have trained on that data and labels it understands the relationship between data and label and then it provides an output okay this is what we call it as a discriminative uh, modeling or predictive modeling right which is used generally used for classification or prediction so if uh, you have worked in that particular technologies um, uh, from the data analytics world right or ai ml uh, having a ai ml background you must be aware of this predictive ml model before the advent of generative ai as well so just to give an example let's say uh, you give a, a lot of pictures of different different dogs right and you label that pictures that this is a picture of a dog now you train that model uh, with a lot of pictures of dog and labeling it that this is how a dog looks right and now once you actually uh, give another dog picture it will tell you that yes it is a dog not a cat now this is a traditional predictive model or classification model uh, which is which was possible even before generative ai now what has been changed when uh, generative ai came now generative ai does not leverage labeling of the data now there are various aspects of generative ai model right which actually does not uh, require a labeled data or a very structured data to understand and to build relationships or to understand the relationships between data and uh, predict or classify the output so just to give an example uh, if you actually give uh, the same image of a dog without actually labeling it that yes it is a dog or not right it can actually help you to create a particular dog as well right so let's say just to give an example let's say uh, you take a german shepherd dog picture right and take an example uh, and give it to generative ai model and say that create an image of a dog 
but it should not be german shepherd it should be uh, some other breed right so it will take that learning from your data uh, since it is trained of a large language uh, model in itself uh, and it is capable enough to understand the relationship that which uh, data you are actually giving it and understand the pattern of your data versus its own training it will be able to generate a new image of a new dog right this was not possible uh, without um, i mean this was not possible before with the predictive ml model where it requires you uh, to train that model uh, on your data with the label uh, on that as well okay so this is very very important to understand uh, and people generally get confused that uh, uh, that uh, <clears throat> whether predict whether it is predictive modeling or it is generative modeling right so if you are not labeling the data if you are not training your uh, model in such a way that this is how uh, a particular image look like right and this is how uh, i am actually identifying that particular data to generate an output right or predict an output or classify an output then it is generative ai okay so it generates new data that is similar to the data it was trained on it understands the relationships on its own it understands the patterns in the even in the unstructured data so it does not need to have uh, structured data and labeling for that and it can create uh, new content as well since it is going to create or generate new content that's why it is called is a generative ai model so just to give some uh, simple statements so that uh, you should actually uh, remember and learn generative ai is a type of ai that can create new content or reason with an existing content such as images text or music very very important to understand that with the advent of generative ai the multi modality of the data input also comes into picture when we say multi modality that it is not only going to capture uh, uh, just a text as an input you can also give an image you can also give a video you can also give a music file as an input and you can ask questions on it i don't know how many of you have used uh, gemini uh, or i mean previously we call it as a bard uh, from google or if you have used even chat gpt as well you can uh, just and upload an image and ask questions about it and it's going to respond uh, using that image if you uh, put an uh, video is going to and ask questions about it it's going to ask uh, is going to respond with that particular video of that as well so this is how uh, and this is what we call it as a multi modality in the generative ai world okay now generative ai also creates by learning from existing data and using that knowledge to generate new outputs that is similar to the data it has learned from so just to give an example um, just taking the uh, same example of uh, a dog right it does not need to uh, train uh, it does not need to get trained on a lot of actually uh, dog pictures to understand that whatever input of a dog you are actually giving it or asking it to generate a dog it does not need that dog as an input you just ask them that create a dog image let's say a running dog uh, with um, a ball in its mouth right since it has been trained on lots and lots of data right similar data it will create that content and um, based on that it will generate an image of a dog with a ball in in its mouth now with that if you don't like that uh, let's say dog should be brown instead of a white color uh, dog you can actually do that because it understands the context as well that whatever uh, the output has been generated and based on that you can um, change the output as per your preferences as well so key um, takeaways from this right that you can easily create a new content or you can also reason your existing content Uh, with your input and it can accept the multimodal inputs be it images text music or even videos as well now we we have a, a, we are actually talking about that uh, it has been trained of a uh, uh, large language model right uh, the generative ai model also known as large language model it is trained on large uh, data set so what is actually uh, is large language model so understand like this that even if if you go back to the predictive ai ml world right where you have to give the data to train your model so that it can actually work efficiently and provide the relevant output 
right? The large language models on which generative AI is based on is actually trained on large, large sets of data. So just understand that, uh, let's talk about Gemini first, right? So Gemini uh, is a large language model from Google, right? Which it has been trained on large data sets of varied, varied types. So if you ask Gemini that, uh, uh, let's say I want to, uh, where is, let's say, Taj Mahal located, right? Or, or I would say complex queries that uh, create an image of a dog sitting in front of uh, Taj Mahal, right? It will actually generate an image uh, of, a, of a particular dog sitting in front of a Taj Mahal. Now, you, have, you did not give any input that this is how a Taj Mahal looks like, this is how a dog looks like, and you have to merge those image, right? Because it has been trained on all those parameters, all those uh, patterns, right? And it can understand your query and generate an output uh, basis on that. So it has been already trained and that's why it is called as large language model because it has been trained on lots and lots of data sets. Okay. So, I mean, just to uh, make you understand and remember it better, but just go to, uh, I mean, see towards the right side that if you uh, give lots and lots of books to a model and that uh, understand this uh, pile of books, right? And now you have learned all those books now. Now give me uh, a simple response that what's a cat, right? So if it will actually respond, a cat is a small domesticated carnivorous mammal, right? Uh, or it can be anything, right? But it now understand that uh, it is the person is actually asking of a cat, Right. And since I know about cats characteristics that it is a mammal, it is carnivorous, it is small and domesticated, all those parameters I'm aware of because I'm actually trained on large language data sets. Right. Now I can easily respond to that. OK. So <clears throat> there are different uh, generative AI large language models. Right. And you will uh, hear these terms uh, very, very uh, interchangeably, there some people call it uh, large language models, some people call it large uh, large models, and some people call it generative AI models. So all all are actually same, right? And there are various uh, large language LLMs uh, available from different vendors. Uh, in Google, we have uh, Gemini as a na native uh, large language model. Uh, you must have heard of GPT-4, uh, Llama from Meta, and lots of, lots of that. Okay. Now, why these large language models are actually different? See, this is not only that uh, you just actually train uh, your data to a large data sets and it's working. The large language models, and that's why it is very, very difficult to actually build your own large language model. It is not easy. It is. It takes a lot of time. It takes a lot of compute and effort, and it takes a lot of. It is very, very expensive to build a large language model as well. And that's why not every organization is actually launching their large language model. So this is different because it has been trained on these data sets and it hasn't also been trained to understand different patterns of that data. So you can leverage, uh, you can build use case on, let's say search uh, on that particular data, like uh, you must be doing with uh, Gemini or chat GPT as on date, right? You can build a conversation voice bot or a conversation chat bot on that where you, the way I'm interacting with you, right? You can build a bot, chat bot, or, or even the voice bot. You just uh, pick, I mean, you just uh, respond to that, or sorry, ask the query, it will respond back, and it will understand your context of your query as well. So it is not like that you have um, statically defined that this is how you should respond. It is automatically responding because it is trained in such a way that it will respond in a conversation mode. Or even if you uh, want to generate a content, it will generate a content for you without any uh, background context uh, of your query as well. Okay. Now let's understand what are the different model types or even large language model types available, right? And based on that, uh, you will understand that how these are being used and can be used for different use cases in the enterprises or even for your own personal use cases as well. First is text to text. As it mentioned, text to text, you're giving text as an input, you're receiving text as an output, okay? Now, it can be in a form of generation. So just taking example, uh, there are large language models available where you can ask uh, the model to generate a code for your use case. So let's say I want to generate a Python code 
for a simple e-commerce website. Okay, I'll give you a simple instruction or a prompt that generate a Python code for an e-commerce application. Now I'm giving that input as a text. It will respond back with a code, uh, with a Python code of an e-commerce application in a form of text only. Now, another use case could be translation, right? I'm typing that my name is Tushar Gupta. Uh, I work for Google Cloud. Translate that in Hindi, okay? So it will translate that uh, in Hindi, but as a text, right? Now, uh, you can also classify that. Uh, these are the data, right? Uh, can you classify it as a, a particular category? It will do that. Or uh, it can extract entities out of it as well, right? So let's say, um, you give a small, a large paragraph or a particular book, right? That please give a summary of this book in the form of text, right? So it will uh, take that text as an input of a large book, right? And it will create a summary out of it, right? So all those things can be possible in a text to text model. So why we are actually discussing on these model types because based on your requirement of your use case, you actually um, decide that which model you should actually use. Another is text to image, right? With typical example, which we have just discussed is on the image generation. You're giving an input as a text that I want to generate an image of a, let's say a dog uh, sitting in a, a brown dog wearing a, let's say red hat, uh, sitting in front of a Taj Mahal, right? So uh, it will not give you a text back. It will give you an image, right? So a text to image can be also a, a, a large mod model type for your use case. Text to video even, right? So uh, now large language model have, have been enhanced, right? Now you can generate a particular video as well. Now you can say that uh, create a video of a, a boy, uh, let's say riding a bicycle um, in front of uh, Switzerland mountains, right? And it will actually generate a video out of it. It can also edit the video as well that you can uh, <clears throat> say that uh, create an image, uh, sorry, create a video or edit that video uh, of a, of this particular link, right, and give me that video. So uh, with your use case, if uh, you want to actually generate a video or edit a video, right, and uh, you can just simply provide a simple text as an input and it will actually work for you. Now text to task as well, and this is very, very important uh, in uh, enterprises primarily, where uh, you create virtual agents, where you create uh, agentic applications, uh, you create virtual agents, I don't know uh, how many of you are aware of uh, robotic uh, process automation, RPA, right? Where uh, the technologies was there uh, to automate various uh, uh, manual tasks, right? Now, this is very, very easy with the generative AI model as well, where you just uh, uh, give instructions to the model and uh, it will help you to create those workflows to automate uh, lots of manual tasks uh, within generative AI. Now, very, very important to understand is that uh, people get very confused, right? I mean, when they start um, leveraging generative AI or when they start experimenting with the generative AI, they get very confused with that, uh, am I a consumer? My use case is consumer specific, right? Or enterprise specific, right? Now think like that. You go to gemini.google.com, right? Which is available for free for over the internet. Right now, if I type in anything over there, let's say write a poem about, uh, uh, let's say mountains, right? Or uh, help me to plan my itinerary uh, for my Goa trip, or uh, uh, let me, uh, I mean, create a, a good song for my uh, son, right? So, or uh, ask for a recipe, whatever, right? These are all consumer specific use cases where you're not worried about uh, the responses which large language model gets. Right. So let's say you uh, are asking for a recipe, right, uh, of a pancake, and it is giving a recipe. Maybe it can go right, but uh, in some cases it may go uh, somewhere wrong. It can hallucinate to actually give you that output. Now, it doesn't have any impact um, of your, I would say, commercial thing, or uh, it does not have any major impact uh, to the response which you are getting. Uh, from the large language model because it is free, right? So these are all the consumer use cases. However, when we actually talk to our enterprise customers, these things do matter a lot. So let's say, uh, talking of an airline, right? I do, um, 
let's say Airtel, sorry, uh, let's say uh, an airline, right, uh, wants to build a chatbot, okay, now for their customers. Now, if I am a user of that particular airline, let's say XYZ airline, and asking that chatbot, do you have a flight to Indore from Delhi at 5 p.m. today? Okay. And if it if the chatbot responds that yes, uh, there is a flight at 5 p.m. today. However, in the back end, there is no flight which is actually running at 5 p.m. Then it's a it has a worse uh, or I would say adverse impact on that particular airline. The consumer of that airline will actually go mad and say that uh, I'm not getting right responses from this particular chatbot and this is not useful for me, right? So just understand the importance of the responses, right? Which a particular use uh, of a particular large language model uh, is responding to a particular consumer, right? So in enterprise, uh, it is very, very important uh, to understand that how they can control the data how they control the hallucinations from that particular large language model response, how they can integrate their own data, how they can actually control, how they can actually get the support. So they have different requirements from the what we are uh, currently leveraging for free in chat GPT or Gemini as a consumer. Because even if we are getting uh, wrong responses in the consumer version of our Gemini, right? We are not, uh, we are not actually impacted. Uh, anything but enterprises have different needs and that's why it is very very important uh, to design uh, their large language model or generative ai architecture in such a way that all their uh, needs related to cost related to security related to hallucinations related to support related to accuracy and uh, explainability of the uh, the responses should be aggregated okay so very, very important to understand that uh, some people say that uh, why Tushar, I will, uh, I mean, normally this question comes from students uh, who are just starting from the colleges. They don't understand uh, that uh, Tushar, uh, Gemini is available for free. Why should I actually go to Google Cloud uh, and pay for the services of Gemini? Okay, this is important. You can go for gemini.google.com and ask your query it cannot be enterprise ready solution for that because no flexibility is there to control the output on that. Now, moving on. Now, there are coming on to enterprises use cases. There are lots and lots of actually uh, use opportunities which an enterprise can actually take on. And now, now this is not restricted to generative AI, but Combination of predictive and generative AI, the consumer uh, or the enterprises can actually avail all these benefits across different categories. So just to name a few, on the customer experience and uh, personalization, they can go for the customer service modernization. So if you remember, uh, I just talked about uh, an airline building a chatbot right, for their own consumer or for their own customers to enhance their customer service. Now. You don't have to actually call the airline uh, support number and there is a chatbot or a voice bot available for you 24 cross 7 to answer your queries regarding your bookings or maybe new bookings or regarding your travel plans. It's already available for you. Now the customer experience has been enhanced with the generative AI. Now there will be there can be use cases where uh, particular enterprises want to modernize their websites or translate their websites because it is because they want to um, uh, make their content available uh, for the users in different languages and this uh, has been actually do, being done uh, at google we are actually working with lots of enterprises where they need their content in regional indian languages if they are publishing their content in tamil nadu they want uh, uh, that content in tamil if they are publishing their content in uh, kerala they want that content to be available in malayalam right so something like that or e-commerce recommenders, right? So a lot of e-commerce uh, organizations are also uh, enhancing their search, right? Using the generative AI. It, now, it, it can go for the knowledge extraction and understanding where it can be used for R&D, uh, transcription, summarization, extraction of some entities from, from uh, particular, uh, let's say, research papers, right? Uh, so the use cases are actually enormous, right? I mean, use cases are... Uh, we, I mean, 
you can say uh, limitless right for that right so just think of a particular category and uh, generative ai can actually help you with that as well but very very important to understand that not every use cases not every use case can be solved with generative ai okay some use cases uh, can be solved using the traditional or i would say predictive ai as well so just to give an example right uh, since i worked with a uh, with that particular customer uh, previously so let's say uh, there is a factory okay where the conveyor belts are actually uh, running right and uh, it's a factory of let's say a particular fan right a home fan right and now um, the the manufacturer wants to understand that if the conveyor belt uh, on which my products are actually uh, going right i should be easily i should be proactively known that um, is there any defect in that particular product and if there is any particular defect i should actually remove that from conveyor belt so that the faulty piece should not uh, get to the customer now it is, it is an important use case right because uh, <clears throat> once you actually starts working in a factory where let's say thousands of fans are actually being built in a single day it is very very uh, difficult to understand where is the defect right with the naked eye and you need uh, some intelligence to do that now can this be possible with generative ai or it can be possible with an ai the answer is yes right the combination of doing that, the combination of uh, predictive and generative ai can help this particular manufacturer to identify the defect in the vision right but it is more uh, i mean this use case is more aligned towards predictive one where we can use the visual inspection of that particular conveyor belt of the images that is capturing and can easily detect the images can sorry easily detect the defects in those images and easily uh, sort out the faulty piece of the products and then the customers only get the right pieces okay so don't think that generative ai is going to solve all your use cases don't think that generative ai uh, has come and now we don't need the traditional ai it is still relevant for enterprises we are still working for all the enterprises we are not every use case can be solved using generative ai now let's understand let's go back uh, let's understand uh, that what google cloud offers in terms of generative ai right now we have understand what is the difference between predictive ai and generative ai what are large language models uh, how it has been translated how it has been uh, uh, now it is not new that how it is only a subset of deep learning as well but it is in more enhanced way because it has been trained of large data sets now understand that what google cloud offers for generative ai we have a, a generative ai platform which is known as vertex ai and these are the different capabilities which we offer uh, as part of our generative ai platform uh, as you can see over here so one is on the agent builder second is on the model builder and the third is our model garden and all those uh, capabilities of this generative ai platform is powered by our own infrastructure the google cloud infrastructure uh, which is specifically trained uh, to run these ai based workloads so we don't have much time to explain each and every component but uh, just to give an example of an agent builder agent builder helps you to create out of the box agents virtual agents uh, which can be used for multiple use cases so let's say you want to uh, build an enterprise search uh, for a customer right you can create uh, just with some clicks easy easy clicks right you can create a, a virtual agent which can which will work you to create a search bar or enterprise search for your customer okay just like google search just take an example of a flipkart just take an example of a, let's say um, amazon.com just to just to be uh, taking example let's you want to search a product right uh, you just go to the search and it will actually start um, understanding your query and start recommending your products now you can easily create those search for your websites as well you leveraging agent builder now you want to build a chatbot you want to build a voice bot right so you don't have to uh, write uh, all the codes right because it is a managed service uh, available from google cloud in the form of agent builder where you can create easily out of the box and uh, virtual agents out of for that now there are some uh, data science uh, uh, professionals right 
uh, and AIML practitioners, right, which uh, needs to build custom agents, right? Not not which are not possible with the uh, managed service from the agent builder. Now, uh, Vertex AI also provides that flexibility using the model builder, where you can write your Jupyter notebooks, uh, you can train your own ML models, AI ML models, you can build your ML ops pipelines, build monitoring over that, right? Uh, you can tune your data uh, generative models based on your requirement using the model builder. So the flexibility uh, which was available for uh, predictive AI uh, previously in Google Cloud, it has been there for the generative AI as well as part of the model builder. Now the third piece is very important is a model garden where uh, you have all the Google uh, models available. And even we have uh, the open source models also available for use within Google Cloud. So Google has been uh, advocate for all the open source technologies from the inception. Uh, and uh, our Vertex AI also supports other uh, third party uh, large language models as well to run on Google Cloud infrastructure as well. So let's take a look on the uh, foundation. Uh, let's take a look on the model garden available uh, from the Vertex AI. So on the top end, uh, these are the Gemini foundation models, uh, the Gemini 1.5 Flash, and recently Gemini 1.5 Pro. These are all managed uh, large language models available from Google Cloud. And as we are speaking today, there are a lot of announcements are going on. And maybe uh, in recent uh, uh, few upcoming months, you will hear some new announcements on Google as well. Now, there are some Google foundation models which are also available. So like Imagine 3 is used for the image creation and editing, as we uh, discussed about the previous use case of generate an image of, a, let's say, a dog uh, wearing a red hat in front of Taj Mahal. Right? That is possible using Imagine 3. Chirp is for the translation. Uh, code. Uh, code A is for the basically for the code generation. And you can also create embeddings out of it as well. Now, there are some task specific models provided by Google as well as a managed API, like speech to text, text to speech, uh, translation, vision API. Uh, if you are aware of the Google Cloud uh, uh, API and AI ML models, before, even before generative AI, these are still available as part of model card. Now, we have also designed some very, very specific uh, domain specific models as well, like uh, we have uh, designed MedLM the medical large language model, which is specifically targeted for life science and healthcare customers. We have, uh, we have also uh, introduced uh, generative AI in our security services as well. And the model which is actually uh, working behind this is our SecPalm, right? which is only relevant for the cyber security services which are available on Google Cloud. Now, what I was referring to that Google is not only, uh, I would say, making available only the native uh, first party models from Google but we also support the partner and open source uh, models as well. So you can install Llama 3.1 uh, models from Hugging Face and even our own open source model Gemma, right, uh, on Google Cloud infrastructure as well, and you can train that. Now, very, very important thing to understand that, uh, which people um, very uh, forget to understand is that uh, I have the model, right? Now I can do anything on that. Sorry, uh, my use case is sorted because I have the model. And now, Tushar, you mentioned about that. Uh, the difference between the consumer and enterprise use cases is that the consumer use cases uh, can be hallucinated. The consumer, the consumer large language model responses can be hallucinated or the accuracy is not that good. But the enterprise can actually uh, be tuned uh, to provide that or uh, to prevent that hallucination. That how it is possible. Now, this, this is where we have to leverage or tune our Gemini or the large language model within Vertex AI using our own knowledge and our own data. And in generative AI world, which we, uh, we call it as a grounding via uh, retrieval augmented uh, generation or RAG. Okay. So it means that, so taking example again back to uh, the airline chatbot, right? So let's say uh, if I'm uh, asking that chatbot uh, that give me a flight uh, to Delhi or Indore from Delhi uh, at 5 p.m., right? It can actually go to Google search and uh, it can actually search for any available flight which is not available from that particular airline, 
Now, the response is good. The response is good for the customer. But think about the airline, right? Let's say I'm taking an example of, let's say, Air India. Just taking an example, right? So let's say you're asking for an airline which is available for Indoor uh, at 5 p.m. And it is giving response of an say, India Indigo airline on Air India website, right? The consumer is happy because it is getting the response, but it is not actually helping Air India for the business, right? And this is where the Air India will use RAG or retrieval augmented generation to connect to their data sources only to respond back to the customer. So if Air India flight uh, is running or is flying at 5 p.m. to indoor, then only it will respond to the customer that, yes, I have the flight available. If not, it will respond that you can actually take another flight at 7 p.m. maybe. Okay, so it, so it has restricted that response using the RAG method, right? So that the responses are not, it is not hallucinating, it is not giving incorrect responses to the consumer, and it is only working as per their enterprise use case. And this is very, very important that um, you cannot actually just start using the large language model in a way it is available. You have to tune it, you have to uh, ground it in a way so that the, the responses should be accurate as per your enterprise needs. So just taking example, let's say uh, uh, you given a you uh, ask a large language model where I can watch Hunger Games in Mountain View. Now, now this is very generic one, right? Just like a Google search, right? So it will search that where are the Hunger Games uh, are actually showcased, and it will actually uh, show you the movie and location and the theater's name, right? Uh, which is not specific for that particular enterprises. But it will give you that response and it will not hallucinate, right? Because the Hunger Games are actually being showcased in that particular theater. Now, if the same person asks that, explain my, let's say, 401k benefits and contribution limit, or let's say if I talk about India, let's say I'm working for Google. If I go and ask large language model, uh, what is my uh, balance leaves for this particular year? Now, this balance leaves cannot be actually searched on Google, right? It is very, very specific for my profile in my particular company, right? And it can only come from my data, my HR system, right? It cannot actually search on internet that, Tushar, you have, let's say, 20 leads available, right? Where I have, let's say, I have availed 10 of them. So this is where we have to tune and um, ground our model so that it can respond accordingly based on the query. So if let's say if uh, this same query goes to this particular model and this model has been grounded with right data, it will actually refer to the employee handbook in the instruction manual FAQ, right? And it will say that yes, for 2023, you can contribute up to this amount as an individual to your 400K plan. Now this is very, very specific to that enterprise and it is not coming from Google search, okay? Okay. Um in the time okay so this is what is generative ai all about a very very foundational concepts of generative ai all about where we have now understand the concepts of uh, what is a predictive ai uh, what is generative ai what is the uh, what are the large language models why we are actually talking about large language models what google cloud offers as part of large language models does google only offer native ones or does it support the third party and open source partners models as well uh, we also see that how we can uh, prevent the large language model to not to hallucinate and not to give incorrect responses using our RAG and fine tuning, right? Now, now with that understanding, you can build the different use cases which we discussed uh, for your uh, personal use as well as for your enterprises. Now, let's talk a very uh, quick one that how you can actually get started. Now, I have given you all that knowledge of a foundation, but for you uh, how to understand that how I can get started and what are the different roles and skills for this particular career. Now, this is what uh, we are looking for. And when you say we are looking for is actually uh, the Google uh, and other companies, uh, if you want to build a career in AI ML, right, this is what we are looking for. You can go for the generative AI software engineer where in the, in the right-hand side, uh, these are the skills which are required for your particular career in as a, as a software engineer. So you should be uh, 
uh, well versed with python c c++ you understand the full uh, machine learning life cycle for model development and evaluation even deployment and maintenance as well right for the ai if you are uh, building your career specifically for the ai ml infrastructure you need to have detailed uh, knowledge on the infrastructure which is uh, relevant for the ai based workloads you need to understand that what are distributed systems performance and acceleration uh, coding languages from java and c++ these are just a, a very very subset of the skills uh, don't uh, uh, take it uh, uh, just like this that uh, if you have the skills and you are, you got the job uh, but uh, these are the very very basic skills you, uh, you need to have if you are looking for your making your career in ai and ml and if you're looking for a, uh, making a career in data science as well, you need to uh, understand that how a model can be developed, how a model can be trained, how you can generate uh, MLOps pipelines. Uh, you need to have very, very strong background on maths and statistics. Uh, and uh, you need to know uh, the statistical language, R uh, language, Python scripting language, and other databases and other skills as well. So these are just uh, a few options which you can actually uh, start thinking uh, if you're actually you're thinking to build your career in AI and ML. Now, what, how Google Cloud and uh, Future Skills Prime help you is to help you uh, with our Cloud Skill Boost. The Cloud Skill Boost is the same training platform which internally Google, uh, Googlers like us are also leveraging. And we have different defined path available for you uh, for free. Shweta, uh, please confirm if uh, they are free for all the participants here, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah, for sure. It's it's free for all the participants. Perfect, perfect. So uh, from the beginner uh, to the advanced level, where in the beginner uh, you will get introduced to what is generative AI. In the intermediate, uh, intermediate specifically for the you will understand that how Gemini works for Google Cloud, and the advanced world where as a developer that how generative AI can do wonders for you, right? I would highly recommend you to actually go uh, to these paths available. And uh, post this event, um, we're going to share all these links with you uh, where you can just register yourself, you will get credits, and uh, then you can actually take these hands on laps to understand uh, the generative AI. So, with that, uh, thank you for your time. Uh, we still have five minutes. So, uh, Shweta, yeah. Kash, let me know if there are some questions. Thank you, Tushar, for that uh, insightful presentation. Your expertise and insights have truly illuminated the potential of Google Cloud and AI course and its impact on career growth. To all our attendees, uh, I hope the webinar would have sparked interest in this exciting field of generative AI for you. Uh, we have a couple of questions, and I'll open the floor now. First, the ones that are on the chat waiting for quite a long time. Uh, we have a question from Abhisar Sony, which is specific to the course. Abhisar is enrolled on the training program, and he says that he just wanted to follow up regarding his progress in the Future Skills Prime course. He has completed 40% and have reached the fourth module, uh, Prompt Design in Vertex AI. However, he's finding it quite difficult and have stopped learning from the last few days because he's not, he's not able to understand the material. So he needs some sort of help. If you can uh, just take a couple of minutes and help him, help him out, or maybe... Uh, redirect him to the right place where he can get this help. Uh, so unfortunately, we do not have that kind of support from Google Cloud perspective. Um, it has to be self-learning. But just write to us. We will see what we can do internally. Um, but uh, we'll try our best. So Abhishek, if you're hearing it out, uh, this is for you. Just need to email on support at quicklabs.com with your exact concern and try and attach a couple of screenshots and the team will be able to help you out with the possible solutions uh, to your problem. So I hope that answers your query. Uh, uh, Abhishek, another... Sorry to interrupt. The uh, support team will not be able to help them with the content because okay. that's completely on the labs. If the labs are not working, um, Maybe you can write to me or we will, I'll send you the email at a later point of time and we can see how we can help. But unfortunately, we don't have that uh, resources available right now. Okay, I can okay. see some questions. Uh, Kash, maybe if you if you allow me, maybe I, I'd like to answer that. Yeah, yeah. So I can see that... Um, uh, do we get any job as a fresher? 
absolutely yes right uh, at google also uh, we recommend that uh, if you have got the skills uh, uh, and if you can uh, be a good asset to our organization right uh, you are most welcome right um, uh, there are a lot of factory uh, jobs available for freshers as well but yes uh, and this is where um, uh, future skills prime is very very beneficial for you the sessions like this is very very beneficial for you where you are getting these uh, sessions so you are getting these hands on app sessions where you can enhance your skills enhance your cv and uh, qualify yourself as a uh, as a job uh interesting question is all also on the mechanical engineering that i am from mechanical engineering background can i actually get into ai absolutely yes right uh, so learning i mean this is what i believe personally that learning uh, should never stop and learning is not restricted to any particular field if you are interested uh, for ai right go for that right even if uh, you are from mechanical engineering uh, you won't believe uh, i mean some of my uh, colleagues are from civil engineering background right and they are working for uh, google are working for ai and working for us uh, working with us uh, for our enterprise customer so your background doesn't matter it's all about your skills and your interests as well and one thing very very important to understand is uh, because of this uh, whole uh, buzzword of going of ai everyone is actually rushing towards ai right so not everyone can become an ai engineer very very important to understand folks uh, please uh, evaluate yourself that do you really want to actually go into the ai there are other career fields available as well you can go for cyber security you can go for infrastructure modernization application modernization anything right but if you really want to become an ai engineer you don't have to have that background but you just need to have those skills where akash me shweta Uh, will help you to actually define those paths for you. Uh, last question I can take uh, is that I want to do data science. It is from Purnima. Is it necessary to have technical knowledge? Absolutely, yes. Without the technical knowledge, um, you, I mean, you cannot do any job uh, for that matter. right so uh, guys what i'm also doing is i'm just uh, pasting uh, a few email addresses on the chat so that you can take a note of it and uh, uh, basically you need to just uh, understand what sort of queries you have and you can email us on those email ids uh, also tushar there is one very pertinent question that i see is that uh, will this generative ai or gemini to be specific can be used to create 3d geometric model for engineering purposes or images etc so if you can take one minute to explain that please so it is very specific right uh, that yeah. it can create 3d model for engineering purpose uh, uh, so for that particular use case uh, you need to actually train that model uh, to give that uh, uh, response as a 3d model uh, you need to actually tune it uh, you need to actually uh, connect to your relevant data sources so that it can understand that what's how does a 3d model looks like but uh, if you are asking me generally you can try and let me know right i have never tried it uh, no use cases have come up yet uh, to create a 3d model maybe it can maybe it cannot right but uh, definitely uh, for an enterprise version uh, if a customer needs it uh, it can be possible for sure but it needs to actually discover a lot that what type of data sources it can connect to whether we need fine tuning or data sources what type of other services we can actually uh, leverage not only a single large language model but a combination of that right uh, can be used to create a 3d model also okay uh, one last comment before we close i can see there are a lot of people who are mentioning and talking about their specific situation like they have enrolled for dba or bca or they are doing engineering or someone is working somewhere and they someone is working in the field of cyber security however they want to switch to ai so tushar one last uh, thought uh, i mean uh, i would request you to place to the audiences to let them yeah. know that how generative ai is really uh, easily compatible with almost all the fields that we have today who are working how how can it be plugged and played yeah yeah so not plug and play i would say but yes uh, all the use cases uh, so if you remember uh, my previous slide right where 
I talked about different different areas uh, which are which you can actually build using generative AI, right? So it is applicable for all the industry sectors. It is applicable for all the organizations. So think of it like that customer service modernization. Just taking example of a customer service modernization. Every organization has customer. Every organization is serving their customers. Everyone uh, is. Every organization is actually uh, uh, concerned about how they provide better service to their customers. Right now, this can be automated using generative AI. Now, let's say talk about developer productivity. Let's say all every organization is developing something. They have the products. If if they are product based organizations, right? They are they have the development team. How we can enhance the developer productivity? How we can bring the operational efficiency in their day to day development operations? The generative AI can help with that. Right. So. These use cases are not restricted to any particular organization or any particular industry sector. These are applicable for everyone. All right. Yeah. So with that, let's uh, bring the session to the close as we come uh, closer to the webinar. I want to thank everyone for your active participation in the webinar. Uh, a special thanks again to Sri Sweta and our expert, Tushar, for sharing your valuable insights. For those interested in enrolling uh, in the Google Cloud Generative AI course, I have just mentioned uh, the few instructions on the chat. Uh, so you can use those links, copy and paste it for now uh, because the webinar would end shortly. Use it uh, on your note, I mean, copy it on your notepad and use it for uh, enrolling on the program. Basically you need to visit futureskillsprime.in, look for the Google Cloud Generative AI course. I've also pasted the link of the course directly on the chat. And uh, so all you need to know is that investing in your skills is investing in your future. So the course, this course is your stepping stone to exciting career opportunities in the world of AI and cloud computing. So thank you all for attending today's Career Mantra webinar. We wish you all the best in your learning journey and career growth. Have a great